Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. And today we conclude our class about data flow analysis. We shall try to unify them under a general framework called the monotone framework. As a start, here you have the equations of the different analysis that we had seen in the previous four classes. We have four pairs of equations. Before we move on, can you try to figure out what are the differences between each of those analyses and what they have in common? For instance, what the analysis in the same column have in, in common? Here, I'm highlighting liveness and very busy expressions. What do, they, what, does, what do these analyses have in common? And analysis in the same row, what do they have in common? For instance, what's common between liveness and enriching definition analysis? In light of these two examples, can you try to categorize the lines and columns of this matrix? Let's see. The columns indicate the direction in which the information flows. The two analyses on the left propagate information backwardly. This means that the information flows in the direction that is opposite to the edges of the control flow graph. And the two analyses on the right propagate information forwardly, meaning along the same directions of the edges of the control flow graph. And the rows indicate if we use union or intersection to join information. We call the analysis where we use union the May analysis. That means that one single data flow fact is enough to ensure propagation of data over a join point. The analysis that use intersection are called must, must analysis meaning that we need the same data flow fact flowing from all the incoming points to ensure that information keeps flowing after the join point. I'm copying these definitions for you here. About the direction, we have forward or backward analysis. About the way to join information, we have either may or must analysis. If you want, stop the video and take a look into these definitions. Just read them over. We can think about data flow analysis as a way to interpret programs. But we are not really interpreting the program to get the concrete values of the variables. That would be problematic, because the interpretation of a program may not really terminate. Instead, we define some abstract values. For instance, instead of talking about the values produced by an instruction, we can talk about the set of live variables produced by that instruction. This way to see the program is called abstract interpretation. And the abstract semantics of an instruction is given by what we call transfer functions. A transfer function is the interpretation of an instruction. In the case of forward analysis, a transfer function shows how to build outsets. In the case of a backward analysis, it shows how to build the insets. For instance, can you recognize the transfer functions in our four examples? Here they are. We have four transfer functions. In the case of liveness and very busy expressions, they build insets. In the case of reaching definitions and available expressions, they build outsets. Again, the transfer functions are showing us how to interpret the program abstractly. Instead of building values of variables, they build sets of data flow information, of data flow facts. These sets are called either in or out in our formalism, depending on the direction along which the information propagates. Notice that the transfer functions don't have to be always the same. In other words, each kind of instruction, I mean add, sub, store, branch, and so on, each kind of instruction might be interpreted by a particular transfer function. As an example, here we have customized transfer functions for liveness analysis. For instance, consider an instruction that loads a constant into a variable. It does not really use any variables, 
So the inset that results from this instruction does not include any other variable. As a final remark, notice that the equations that join information are called merging functions. The merging functions are special operators that determine how data is combined at joint points. Do you remember how were the merging operators that we had seen in the previous classes? Well, we have used two kinds of merging operators. Those were union for the May analysis and intersection for the must analysis. Something very important to note is that this combination of transfer functions plus merging operators plus the way to initialize the in or in the outset must be engineered in a way that we can ensure that the analysis terminates. But this will be the subject of one of our next classes. What's interesting um, just for now is that this theoretical framework, the monotone framework, will give us the tools to frame many different data flow analysis. And as long as we do it right, we will have the right tools to prove termination. We shall talk more about that in the future. So that concludes our introduction to data flow analysis. Most of what we had seen in this class came from the work of Gary Kildall from the 70s. But then scientists like Francis Allen have also contributed much to the foundations of data flow analysis. I left some key papers in this figure.